Glasswire is the ultimate firewall and network monitoring software. Check it out at the link below. What's up guys, CPMod here, back with another video. And today we're taking a look at the Gigabyte H310MH motherboard. This guy makes up the baseline of Gigabyte's brand new motherboards in the H310 chipset family. Now today we're gonna to be taking a look and seeing really what this guy has to offer and what's it all about. Now the H310M-H, or rather non-H, is a very similar model to the rest of the H310M series out of Gigabyte, offering you what you need without really going over the top. Some might say that that these motherboards are a little bit lacking in some departments but if you do take a moment to actually take a look at these motherboards you'll find they're not too bad at all and Gigabyte definitely has you covered for mid to low end type of systems. Now our particular model again being the H310MH is slotting in in a micro ATX form factor. There's also two full size ATX and also two ITX in this H310 series and as we can take a look here at this screenshot damn there's definitely a lot of different options available so really whatever build you have going should have a motherboard out of this particular series if that is what you are after. Now speaking of any build out there let's take a look at the aesthetics as when it comes to building a system that is usually something that a lot of us do consider these days with our modern systems and speaking of those aesthetics they aren't actually too terrible. Sure there's no flashy LEDs or flashy heat sinks here and really the chipset cooler looks like it's being cut off a slice of piece of metal honestly there's nothing really too much going on here overall though it does definitely have it where it counts. We do get ourselves a dark matte PCB with grey accents, PCI RAM slots that also too come with black connectors on the rest of the board. Overall, it is actually not too bad in its design department. Gone are the days of this horrible brown colour of PCBs on our mid to low end systems or even heck, green PCBs those days are definitely behind us. We do see even on a budget board here today, it's still getting a decent set of aesthetics and Gigabyte is definitely paying attention at least a little bit to the aesthetics that this system does have on it. So I do have to say it's not too bad looking for a very budget system. Now here in 2018 you'd be sort of expecting some RGB LEDs everywhere. Unfortunately there isn't and I guess depending on who you are that's either a really good thing or not so much of a good thing. We do get ourselves a yellow audio divider when it comes to the LEDs on the system but otherwise there isn't any RGB or even just any static LEDs and unfortunately there's also too no LED headers that I could find on this motherboard. So when it comes to LEDs you will have to rely on third party either manufacturers or add-ins to go ahead and add LEDs to your system but personally I'm not complaining at all it's still a not too bad looking board and it remains very neutral in its visuals department. Now taking a closer look at this motherboard, we are seeing a chipset based on the brand new Intel H310 chipset, supporting Intel's latest Coffee Lake CPUs with HDMI and also to DVI, meaning you can really pick up any Coffee Lake CPU, chuck it in and you are off to the races. But for those of you who want to go ahead and smash out some gaming on this guy, you can also do add in a PCI Express card with the single 16X slot that is available and dual 1X slots for adding some, well, add in cards. We can go ahead and add ourselves a full GTX 1080 Ti, but as this is a bit more of a budget system, you're probably not going to be doing that, but whatever video card you can throw in will definitely run. Now on top of this, we also do only get two RAM DIMMs with support for up to 32GB of DDR4 RAM through single channel configurations, and though with that being said, networking on the other hand actually isn't too bad. Powered by the Realtek GBE LAN chipset, and in terms of our audio front, it's back at it again with Realtek with the ALC88 7 codec. Audio isn't actually too bad. In testing it was able to power up my Audio Technica M50X headphones absolutely no problems and whilst they're not the world's hardest headphones to drive they are a little bit more harder to drive than your sort of super cheap and budget stuff and let's face it most of us can agree the Audio Technica M50X or the M50 series isn't too bad when it comes to a super nice baseline set of headphones and definitely audio wasn't too bad. I had a good time with it so pretty plus from me. Keeping it in terms of audio, as we are looking at a budget board, we're also do noticing some really premium features from just a couple years ago. For example, the audio is actually on its own slice of silicon to the rest of the board. Sure, personally, I never noticed the difference between having audio chipsets on its own slice of silicon versus just on the general motherboard, but it is a feature that we only saw on super high-end motherboards a few years ago has now trickled down to our, well, more super budget and super low-end stuff. So I'm really happy to see that this kind of stuff has finally 
gotten to the other end of the market, making for a really all-rounded system. And I'm really, really happy that this generation that it's actually come out. Again, sure, it's something that I personally haven't noticed difference between, you know, low-end audio and high-end audio, but at the end of the day, it is still nice to see features that were super high-end a few years ago now on our budget board. Now, on top of this, whilst we don't get USB-C, we do get ourselves a 3.1 internal header, as well as four SATA ports for, well, going ahead and doing some basic expansion. You're not going to be setting up a major RAID setup on this, but for general day-to-day -day storage, it isn't too bad. Now, jumping into my building experience with this board, there actually wasn't too much to dislike for such a budget board. The PCI Express slot was definitely nice and big in terms of the tab it had available, so you could go ahead and easily pull out a video card and throw it back in, no problems there. And also, to the CPU socket had plenty of space around it for, well, mounting up large coolers. If you were going to be going with, say, a passive airflow system, you could have plenty of room to get your big hands in there if you do have larger hands. One little standout of an odd thing when I was plugging everything in was the 24 pin actually sits a little bit higher on the motherboard. Now more budget motherboards are known for moving things around into a little bit weird situations, but I just found a little bit odd that it was a bit further up than what you would usually expect for general 24 pins. But speaking of plugging things in, everything felt well put together. There was no flex or play in any of the connectors, there's no wiggling. When you chuck the 24 pin and pulled it back out, there's no sort of creaks or cracking noises. Everything felt fine and absolutely solid. Now, that being said, I definitely did have a few more gripes than just a weird place 24 pin. The ATX power connector also do has the tab in the opposite direction, so when you flip it around the back of the motherboard, you're gonna have to like do some gymnastics with that cable. It's a little bit of a pain. A lot of other manufacturers do this, and just about most other motherboards have it like this, but it would have been nice to see that the actual uh, EPS power connector be switched around. Though with that being said, not many people really are that affected by it, and it's more something of my side when I'm building a lot of systems and pulling them all apart, it's just one of those things that I would have liked. Speaking of things that I would have liked was also to heatsink over the MOSFETs. There is unfortunately a lack of heatsinks over the MOSFETs and chokes on the VRM system. Now, this is a bit of a letdown for the visuals departments, but let's face it, this is a H310 motherboard, so you're not really going to be overclocking this, and also to the price point it comes in, you're probably not going to be pairing this guy up with the super top tier CPU, so honestly, I'm not too concerned, but it would have just been a little nice extra. All in all though, for about 100 Australian dollars, or even less in some situations, this board definitely is hard to go wrong with. It takes high-end features that were, well, really high-end a few years ago and packs them into a mid to low-end price point that is definitely nice and would fit very well in with a lot of other people's systems. In terms of aesthetics, they're definitely not too bad and whilst they don't stand out from anything, they're definitely not standing out in the wrong way as well. So in terms of actually keeping it basic and not too bad, it is a pretty nice looking motherboard. From basic PC to a mid-range gaming rig, Gigabyte has definitely done a nice job at delivering a lot of features without really all the extra fluff that comes along that bumps up the price with motherboards. Sure, I could complain a lot more about this guy, but again, keeping in mind its price tag and where it's entered in the market, it's definitely pretty hard to complain about. But let me know what you think of this board down in that comment sections. If you're building a budget system, would you grab this guy or maybe something else? Again, let me know down below. If you want to go ahead and grab this board, I've left links in the description box. Otherwise, thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thank you.